Hello and welcome to another Star Citizen Ship Buyer's Guide, this time for the Origin X1, which is on concept sale until Monday the 9th of October. It's an open canopy bike, flyable both on the ground and in space. It comes in three flavoured variants, ranging from $35 all the way up to $50. During the sale, each X1 comes with an AeroView hangar, lifetime insurance, and two pieces of hangar flare. Each of the following ships that I'm about to talk about is available for $5 less if you're not using any store credit when purchasing. This is referred to as a war bond discount, the idea being it directly supports Star Citizen's continued development. In the future, the ship price will increase as well, and the offer will not include lifetime insurance or these other extras as well. The X1 baseline is available for $40, and as the name suggests, it is the standard model of Origin Jumpwork's new high-performance open canopy vehicle. Built from lightweight polymers, the X1 takes speed and agility to the next level thanks to seamlessly integrated engine technology and joint vector thrust placement. Innovative design and high quality engineering weave together to create a flight experience like no other. It's the it's the standard model. The X1 Velocity is uh, $45. How do you make fast go faster? Origin Jumpworks X1 Velocity dares to push the boundaries of speed by stripping down the base X1 to its core elements, eliminating the weapon mount and incorporating the new Syntec composites to create a lighter chassis for overall weight loss. It's Basically the pure speed and racing variant. No weapons on this one. The X1 Force is $50, the most expensive of the series, built to endure tougher environments and look good while doing it. The X1 Force is modified version of the uh, X1 base model, featuring additional defensive elements to toughen up this speedy, agile, open canopy bike, allowing it to serve in a variety of roles, from exploration of worlds to potentially security infiltration op missions. Uh, so vital statistics. All of the X1s are geared towards speed and luxury. They are single-seater vehicles with zero cargo space. So you're only going to be carrying what your character carries. Uh, there's no like little stores for, for weapons or anything. The baseline and force models come with a single fixed nose mounted size one weapon and a gun to go with that as well. And the Velocity has no weapons at all, but it is lighter and probably less durable as well. It kind of favours speed over anything else. It is pure racing variant. Uh, the Force has an additional vehicle-sized shield generator, and um, so that might make it a lot more tanky. All of the X1s are expected to be of a similar size to that of the Nox. So 5.5 to 6 metres long, uh, 1.5 metres wide, and 1.5 metres tall. And the Nox is the loner ship for the X1 until the X1 is flight ready. The X1 is a parasite vehicle as well. It has no quantum or jump drive, and it can't break or enter atmosphere of a planet or moon without aid of a parent ship. So just bear that in mind. It obviously can't fly around the planet as well once it's in atmosphere. It is basically a ground vehicle once it's in atmosphere. Let's do a comparison of the other vehicles uh, that are similar to it, so the other open canopy ships. Expect the Velocity racing variant of the X1 to be the fastest open top canopy racer in a straight line, but it's likely that the Nox is more agile um, and better at turning or strafing. The X1 Force is a very interesting vehicle as the extra shield can make it a bit more tanky, but in the future, when there are more types of shield available and possibly allowing uh, you to traverse more environmental hazards by having different types of shield, this kind of vehicle could be invaluable, allowing you to protect yourself from two different extreme environments. So assume that you can protect yourself from cold and heat in the extreme if you had two different shields on board. These small open canopy vehicles should be quite hard to detect as well, but if the Force, for example, is running both shields simultaneously, both are on, then you might be a bit easier to see if someone's looking for your EM signature, but turn them off and then you might not be able to be seen at all. Stealth in Star Citizen is all about system and environment management. The single S1 weapon does mean that the X1 base and force will be at a disadvantage in firepower when compared to the Nox and Dragonfly, who are able to bring two size one weapons to a gunfight. But it may well be that you can outrun those bikes in a straight line, so you can choose when to engage and disengage. The Dragonfly is still the only bike able to carry cargo or a second passenger, so if if either of those things are important to you, then the Dragonfly is the only choice. This is a new section I'm trying out in my ship buyer's guides from previous FAQs of the other open top canopy vehicles uh, and the blurbs about the X1. I've put together a few answers for some of the commonly asked questions on the X1 already. Uh, please take a 
kind of a little bit of salt with this, as I'm not a dev, but I'm pretty good at research and understanding intention of vehicles. So these might not be 100% accurate, but they should be relatively, relatively solid. The X1 shouldn't be capable of atmospheric flight. When it's on a planet's surface, it would just be operating in its ground mode, but it will obviously be able to fly around in space once it's broken atmosphere in its parent ship. The X1 will be capable of all-terrain travel, even over the water should be fine, but more hazardous areas could cause um, damage to with your ship or performance um, and rough terrain might cause some issues to any of the open canopy ships. The X-1 will be able to be stowed and secured in various ships for transportation either in the cargo bay or the hangar of the ship. Ships that should be able to deploy and fit at least one X-1 and secure it safely in a cargo hold are the Caterpillar, the Freelancer, the Constellations, uh, the Starfarer, the Retaliator, as long as it's got the cargo modules, the Cutlass Black and then larger ships like the Idris um, P and M and the 890 Jump. Um, ships that should not be able to deploy um, an X-1 safely, although you may be able to physically fit it in the cargo area or in the, the hold, it won't be able to be secured properly in the ship. And that's the Avenger and Re uh, Reliance. Um, you are very unlikely to be able to put a X-1 in there. There isn't any form of special ejection for the pilot with the X-1. You'll have to jump off the vehicle in a case of emergency, um, just like the other ones. The X-1 doesn't carry any form of onboard life support. The rider is dependent on their EVA reserves while operating in space or on a planet with a non-breathable atmosphere. They are still nailing down exactly what armors you'll be able to wear with open canopy vehicles. Um, so expect at least light armor um, with the medium and heavy we don't exactly know yet. In the future, you will be able to swap out components of the X-1 for better parts, possibly focused towards racing, stealth, or more rugged combat. Although uh, its weapon hardpoint is a size 1 ship weapon, the rest of its components are smaller than a ship's component sizes and are referred to as vehicle-sized components. But the, the, the actual weapon of the of the vehicle is a ship sized weapon size one in space the nox has a top speed of 220 scm uh, with its afterburner speeds it can reach 550 so and on the ground it's got 100 meters per second i'm expecting at least those speeds for the x1 obviously in a straight line it should be pretty quick uh, and faster for the racing variant when is it going to be flight ready there are no set dates for when the X1 is going to be flight ready and available to use. The smaller vehicles, however, that have no extra mechanics, they can potentially be done relatively quickly in the current ship pipeline. I'm expecting it mid-2018 for the X1. The X1 is suitable as a lifetime insurance token. Basically, you can buy an X1 and then upgrade it to another ship when that other ship has an available upgrade so upgrades for ships are only available during sales like the super hornet but you could upgrade your x1 to a super hornet and the super hornet would have lifetime insurance that's the idea of lifetime insurance tokens please remember that everything will be obtainable in game though so buying these ships is a way to support star citizen but if you're ever in a position where you're asking yourself should i buy a ship or hardware for my pc go for the hardware every time and, and get the ships in game. In Alpha 3.1, you will be able to buy ships with Alpha UBC that you get from playing the game. So you only really need that $45 game package to get involved. Every month we give away a ship for October. It's a X1 Force this time. Yay, it's topical. Um, all you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my Star Citizen content during the month. So do you have any questions about the X1, about the concept cell, about any of the variants, about any of the other open-topped canopy vehicles or anything about Star Citizen Alpha 3.0 or its development in general. A special thank you to my Patreons for allowing me to create the amount of content I do. If you're interested in becoming one of them, there's a link to Patreon below, as well as everything else we've talked about. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, as it really does help me, and I will see you in the verse.